Hello and welcome. So, as a part of today's video, we are going to discuss about is the intermediate storage condition for the water loss study correct? So, basically, the water loss study is required uh, for the aqueous based formulation packaged into a semi permeable container. Now, what is the meaning of semi permeable container? Now, these are the container which will not create the permanent barrier for all the state of the material. It will have the complete barrier for the diffusion or transfer of the solute particles. But this container will not have the barrier for passage of solvent and gases. And hence, they are classified as the semi-permeable container. And uh, what is the example of semi-permeable container? The low density polyethylene bottles, LDPE, is the classical example of semi permeable container. So, in case if a product is packaged into a semi permeable container like LDP bottle, which is aqueous based product like ophthalmic product, then you have to conduct the water loss study because in these containers the water loss is very much possible. So we are going to talk about what are the different storage conditions one has to consider for conducting the water loss study. But uh, very specifically, my focus will be on understanding the intermediate storage condition in this case. So as I explained earlier, the water loss study shall be carried out to demonstrate that the aqueous based product packaged in semi permeable container can withstand low humidity. So first understand why the water loss will happen and why water gain will not happen in the given uh, example. And you need to understand something called as the concentration gradient. So what is the meaning of the concentration gradient? In case if you have the two separate systems and one system has more amount of concentration of the given solute and the another has the lower amount of the concentration of the given solute. So the, the flow of the solute is going to happen from the higher concentration towards the lower concentration because of the concentration gradient or the difference in the concentration. So in given case where you have the aqueous based formulation, for example, the ophthalmic product, in that case, your ophthalmic product will have almost 100% water inside and outside the bottle you will have the water in the form of the relative humidity and the humidity can be let us say 60%, 70% or even sometimes very low like 40%. You can easily understand that now there is a difference in the water concentration inside the product and outside the product. So please tell me in a chart box from which the water loss or the water movement is going to happen? Is it from inside the product to the outside or is it from outside the product in the product? So obviously the answer should be the water movement or diffusion should happen inside the product towards the outside of the container. In that process, the product is going to lose the water. So as we clearly understand that the water loss is the very much possibility for aqueous based product package into a semi permeable container. The important point is we need to understand what are the consequences of this water loss. If there is a water loss happening, is there any negative impacts onto the quality of the product? Because the water concentration may be required for appropriate solubility of the anal solutes present inside the product. The water concentration is very much needed to maintain the certain level of osmolality. So all these parameters are very important as per as the functioning of the ophthalmic product is concerned. And hence the water concentration is very important. The water loss can bring the negative impact onto the product performance. So this evaluation can be carried out under the condition of low relative humidity. Now this low relative humidity term is very important to understand. So why the water loss cannot be studied at any humidity, but why the ICH and WHO guideline has mentioned to conduct this study under the low humidity. And the answer to this particular question 
is inside the uh, concentration gradient. So, the greater is the difference in the water concentration, then the ratio or the rate of water loss is also going to be greater. So, please tell me. <coughs> so, please tell me now in which case you will have the greater concentration gradient. In case if you have the low outer humidity or in case if you have the higher outer humidity. For example, compare that you have a two different humidity conditions outside the product. One is 40% RH and another one is let us say 60% RH. So in which case the concentration gradient will be more? Obviously, in case where the 40% RH is available as compared to the 60% RH. So we understand that the lower humidity brings the higher water loss and hence the study is proposed to be conducted under the low humidity. So let us now understand what are the conditions proposed by ICH, WHO and also the ACN. Now the ACN stands for Association for Southern, uh, sorry, the Association for Southeast Asian Nations. They also have their own stability guidelines. So we are going to understand what are the important storage conditions proposed by these three guidelines. So for uh, long term storage condition as per as uh, ICH Q1A R2, you will find that the 25 degrees Celsius is the temperature provided given and the 40% RH is uh, the relative humidity. So if you look at the general storage conditions, you will find that the 25 degrees Celsius and 60% relative humidity. So the first important point to be noticed that the relative humidity is not 60% as like our routine stability study for our solid oral dosage forms, but it is 40% RH. And what is the reason for that? The point number two, this evaluation can be carried out under conditions of low relative humidity. And because of that, it is very much prudent, important to understand that the relative humidity must be kept as low as possible, even for the low, uh, for the long term conditions. There is another alternative condition provided by ICH and that is 30 degrees Celsius and 35% relative humidity. Please understand. The variation in temperature is allowed to be plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius and variation into the relative humidity is allowed until plus or minus 5% RH. So those details are not captured into the presentation, but this is the information. Now when you look at the WHO stability guideline, you will again find the similar kind of the storage conditions for the long term study, 25 degrees Celsius and 40% RH or alternatively you can take 30 degrees Celsius and 35% RH. Now when you look at the ACN uh, guideline, you will find that the storage conditions for long term is 30 degrees Celsius and 35% RH. So for the long term conditions, we can logically understand what is the reason for the lower humidity like 40% RH or 35% RH. I hope you are clear with the long term conditions now. Let us now talk about the uh, the uh, intermediate storage conditions. See in the intermediate storage condition the temperature has been maintained as 30 degrees Celsius quite obvious because it has to be a uh, little harsher as compared to the long term. So from 25 degree to 30 degree it is much more logical but I don't able to understand why the ICH has maintained 65% relative humidity for the intermediate storage condition. It should be 35% RH or maybe little less than that. Or it should be around 40% uh, RH if no change, but they have mentioned 65% RH. Even though the WHO also talks about the similar intermediate condition humidity requirement, that is again the 65% RH. ACN has not given any intermediate conditions as such and uh, let us now understand the accelerated storage conditions requirement. So you will find that the accelerated storage condition uh, is at 40 degrees Celsius and 25% RH. So logically the reduction in humidity is much much appreciated for the accelerated storage condition because this is going to 
become the harsher storage condition as far as the water loss is concerned. So one can expect to get greater water loss with 25% RH as compared to maybe 40% RH or 35% RH. Similarly, WHO as well as ACN guideline has mentioned the similar accelerated storage conditions. So what is your opinion as per as the intermediate storage conditions for the water loss study? So I would like you to uh, connect this process with the general case uh, storage conditions proposed by ICH and same is proposed even by the WHO also with the little addition of uh, 3075 in the long term. So 2560 and uh, 3065 is the long term condition. ICH guideline Q1AR2. Now the intermediate condition is, is what 30 degrees Celsius and 65% RH. It is little harsher than the long term conditions. And the accelerated condition is again way beyond harsher as compared to the long term condition. So with this logical approach, do you think that the ICH could have given 30 degrees Celsius and 35% RH as an intermediate storage condition to conduct the water loss study for the aqueous based formulation packaged into a uh, semi permeable container. So thank you so much for watching this video and I would like to understand your opinion on this particular topic. Bye bye.